In this video, I'm going to chat a bit about the shiny new Javelin anti-cheat, boasting numbers of 99% hit rate on hackers banned, according to EA. Yes, big number, a very big number. I'm also going to chat a bit about why it might not be all that. And finally, I have a PSA for people trying to get on the right track to get Battlefield 6 launching with all this secure boot nonsense. This isn't going to be the techiest and most painstaking detail, but it's just enough to enlighten people and so they can understand. Javelin works at a kernel level and the idea is that it blocks anything from running that isn't appropriately signatured for access. Consider that without this check, hackers and their malicious software easily bypass other less invasive means of anti-cheat and just get right to ruining your enjoyment without reprimand. So this kernel level anti-cheat is supposed to stop that, thus we will all be having more fun on a fair playing ground. No hackers? In theory. A YouTuber, Gemini899, speaks on the fact that apparently it's not uncommon to simply buy quick fix verifications possibly from China that just give the means of passing for this so-called signed software and just like that they're back in. There's an extra step to get your hacks in game sure but is it really much of a stop against malicious hack software or what? The claims are big. EA is 99% banning claim thanks to Javelin. Mate that's basically 100%. We can't help but feel like this seems a bit lofty and indeed many would say it is. Testing ground for this is on some of EA's sports games and in fact Battlefield 2042 which has recently been slapping people with the secure boot error. Reportedly there are massive player declines as people suddenly hit this error. Realising the depth of the steps required to get things as Javelin demands, hell of a way to prevent hackers getting in your games, just have no players. There's definitely something to be said about the potential for confusion on the data. If lumped in those numbers of so-called less hackers is also a mass of players sloughed off by the distaste for the anti-cheats requirements. So while there has been transparency about the implementation of this anti-cheat and its requirements, it really feels it's been dismissed as this quick fix that consumers must adhere to and it's all sweet. It's computers mate. It's just never that simple most of the time. They should know that. Yeah look go ahead console players now's your time to shine if ever there was one. This whole approach is not all that despicable at its core. If the intention was to secure a great environment in game, free of insecure pricks with cheeky little tools, it's just the sheer fact that this is straight up bad UX. The user experience is heavily tarnished if they hit this block. I can't begin to imagine the difficulty in which developing stable and reliable anti-cheat entails. Again, it's just this frustration right at the door. People are ready to go. I personally have already heard a number of people I've talked to about this just go, nah, not doing it. Flat out like that's it just not even going to try it's that bad like we don't want to have to pay for a product and then have to go and do all this work that we're really not that interested in i'm going to flick to the next section here detailing what's up and what to follow to get things rolling This is an emergency PSA to players trying to launch the Battlefield 6 beta, the PC players, regarding the secure boot problem upon launch. If you've got the warning to enable secure boot, if you've taken the steps but secure boot is not working, and if it all went bad and your system is no longer booting, I went through this rubbish myself today and just wanted to help some people hopefully catch it and find the right fixes quickly. So off the rip, I'll say this, do not proceed with the secure boot fix for your PC to launch Battlefield 6 until you have thoroughly listened and followed along to an appropriate guide. There's a delicate point in the specific part where you change your BIOS mode to UEFI if your system boot drive is not GPT and rather states it is MBR, you have to change that drive to GPT. If you don't, you'll flat out balk your install and your PC will likely not boot. Seriously, this will all make sense when you follow the links that I'm going to provide shortly. Go to this guy, he has the rundown, follow along and please don't skip steps, save yourself the nightmare. There's a bit more video here but no worries if you just want to jump straight to Medrelen to get this sorted. Good on you mate. Mostly just wanted to help get awareness out there because this is going to be a shit show, guaranteed. Here we are pumped for the beta for Battlefield 6. We don't even need the stupid EA app this time. Womp womp. Inserts obscure process required by by you, the player, the paying customer to begin learning boot processes and navigation of BIOS to make your computer behave in accordance. Wow. 
We hope this is in fact so good. Seeing a cheater in Battlefield 6 is rarer than a Battlefield 2042 fan. If you have further issues with stubborn secure boot not enabling, apparent in the system information window, check this guy out too. He goes a bit more in depth and hopefully it helps you iron out the last of the bullshit. You can in fact follow the EA link suggested when the secure boot issue appears on Steam specifically. It's essentially the same thing, just not as reassuring as watching these guys plug through it for you to witness. Again, please be careful. It's not a death sentence if you mess it up, but it's just a bastard of a process if something goes wrong. If it has all gone bad already and you need to get your PC back to healthy boot, Take a breath, it's unjust you've been forced to this point, but your BIOS is simply confused. MBR discs are for legacy BIOS, GPT discs are for UEFI. There are a number of things that might be required. If you can get to the BIOS but won't boot, you might be able to go back in and set the boot mode back to legacy BIOS. If not, you might need to try a number of things. And here's Stefan for some of those fixes. I know this video is literally just a bunch of links, but these guys have the know-how well over me they're gonna do it better you want to follow them I really just wanted to compile the details to help prevent or reverse things going wrong around this the perks of being a console player huh it's been a roller coaster good luck hope all this stuff works